Thanks for checking out this movie review, and as it is a movie review and not a movie analysis, there will be no spoilers in this. The analysis is the one where I jump way into depth, give all the spoilers, and usually there's going to be much older movies than the ones I do for reviews. I think I'm going to keep mainly the newer movies being just reviews and older movies being analysis because people definitely should have seen the older ones, newer ones. Uh, maybe not so much, so I don't want spoilers out there on that, or at least I don't want to be the one throwing spoilers out for that. Uh, so this one, I say it's newer, but I mean, it's from 2015, so we're looking at a, not quite, but about four years now for this film to be out. So um, it's one I've been meaning to get to, so I guess some people would say it's not that new, but the thing is, there's so many good movies coming out nowadays that it's just kind of hard to keep up, so I do consider that newer because some people just may not have gotten there yet. But anyway, it is a 2015 film, Green Room, and it's, I mean, it, it's billed as horror, but I think it's kind of more of like a thriller with horror elements to it. It's kind of like criminal thriller with horror elements type, yeah. So, um, Jeremy Saunier is the person who did it, uh, although I don't know, he may go by Saunier. I, I would assume it's Saunier, but, you know. So, uh, overall, the film, really enjoyed this film. I didn't know what I was really getting into. I didn't know a whole lot about it. I had just heard the name before, and people were just like, oh, Green Room, it's a good movie. It's like a horror film. The sad thing about this film is when you start it up and you immediately realize that Anton Yelchin is in it. And not sad because he's a bad actor. Sad because he was a wonderful actor, and he has since passed. And I think he was extremely underrated for how good of an actor he was and the roles he got. One of my favorite roles that he ever did was in the film uh, Burying the Ex, where he plays this guy whose uh, girlfriend comes back to life after she dies. And he's already in a relationship with another woman. And so she's uh, like a zombie trying to still be in a relationship with him. So he has to kind of figure out how to... <laughs> how to uh, balance these two things. It's obviously like a horror comedy. It's really well done, and Anton Yelchin does a wonderful job, just like he does in Green Room. And I'll say overall in Green Room, everyone does a really good job. I didn't see a single actor in this film who I was just like, that's not that good of a line delivery. I thought everyone did great. So uh, I don't know if it's that it was just all super quality actors that were involved or Jeremy Saulnier was able to get great performances out of people or a combination of those two things because let's be honest it could be both so going into the film uh I do have some notes so I'll be looking down here and there but um one of the main things to me is from the get-go I realized this looks really nice it's very well directed cinematography is really good but the whole film's kind of dark but there are films where it's really dark and it's hard to see things and there are films where it's really dark but they've kind of lit it enough so that it's it's still super dark but you can see everything and this is one of those films where like they lit it enough so it stays dark but you can tell what everything is and everything's going on so i like that a lot a film example of the other one where it's just too dark and you can't even tell what the hell's going on is the uh, alien versus predator requiem I've watched that movie like, I guess one and a half times because the second time I was like, I can't even finish this movie because I can't even tell what's going on. The first time I watched it all the way through, I couldn't tell what was going on. The second time I tried to watch it, I just stopped halfway through because I was like, I don't know what I'm seeing. I still don't know what I'm seeing. So that film did it horribly. Green Room did it right. Did a great job. So, um... But in the beginning of the film, what I will say is that it was kind of hard. Oh, I'm sorry, the light's getting a little harsh there. It was kind of hard for me to connect with the characters because they actually seemed like kind of dirtbags, like not that good at people. They were kind of, I mean, you got the, the, the idea that they were, they're like punk rock people. This isn't really spoiling anything. They're like punk rock people. They do things their own way. But they seem kind of crappy as, as people, and, and I had a hard time kind of, um, relating to them and like being like oh these are the good guys in this film but when everything happens when the conflict starts you immediately become like oh okay like you immediately start to connect with them and be like these are the good guys these are the people i'm definitely rooting for because of the situation they're thrown into and who they're up against 
And if you know even a little bit about this film, this is not really a big spoiler, but I guess like semi-spoiler-ish, because I'll tell you who the villain is or the villains, uh, it's Nazis. So um, anytime you, you have one of these films where, you know, even the characters like a little bit unlikable, as soon as they're put into a conflict with Nazis, you're immediately like, that's the person I'm obviously rooting for right now, and I hope they get out of this because Nazis, and Nazis are the huge evil and unfortunately they're a real evil in the world so you know that's an easy way to immediately be like these people are good because these people on this side are nazis they're bad obviously so um so yeah i had i did have a hard time connecting with them until the conflict started so once that happened i was like okay i'm in like this makes you know i'm feeling for these people more so um one of the things is I felt like it was very smartly written uh, in the in the aspect of the story felt real. Nothing in there felt outlandish. There are plenty of films I've seen, especially that have um, a horror bent to them. Either they are straight horror or they are like horror adjacent, as people say, um, where it's kind of like, oh, it's entertaining. But a lot of these premises just don't even seem relatable or realistic. And, and I'm not talking about just realistic as in, like, based in reality, but I mean realistic as it relates to the environment that's set up through the, the establishment of the beginning of the film. And I felt like with this one, it is kind of based in, like, a real world, and based on real world and based on how they set up the environment of the film, I felt like everything in it felt like it made sense. Like, there wasn't a whole lot. There was, like, some very, very small things here and there that seemed like a little bit like, eh, I'm not really sure that that's how that would go, but it was like maybe one or two things, and they were not super major, they were pretty minor, so for the most part, I thought they did a really good job with the writing to realistically get people from point A to B to C to D, like the whole way through, I felt like, yeah, this makes sense, yep, this makes sense, and um, on the note of the writing, I thought the writing was so good and the execution, obviously, with the directing and the acting because the tension was high for this film. And they did a really good job of keeping that tension up throughout the film. Uh, that's my favorite type of horror or horror-ish film are the ones where you can have a lot of tension and you keep it taut, I guess. Uh, and I'd say another really good example of one would be... Um, the, the French extremity film High Tension by Alexander Aja, which is not his actual real name. He changed it, but that's a whole other thing. But uh, that film, I think, does an amazing job. I know it's called High Tension, but it actually is super high tension, and it keeps it the whole time. So that's just another great example. But I thought The Green Room did a really good job of keeping that tension up, and that really kept me engaged. And I'm sure a lot of other audience members who saw this really kept them engaged. Um, uh, it super crazy to see Patrick Stewart in a role like he was in in this film. It's very, very, very different. I'm not going to spoil anything about it, but if people have seen this and they're watching this review, you know what I'm talking about. This role for Patrick Stewart is very different. Uh, people who haven't seen this, first of all, if you can't tell from the way I'm talking about it, you should definitely see this film. If you've had any interest, even if you don't have interest in it going into this, you should definitely check this film out. It's very, very interesting and very engaging. But Patrick Stewart in this seems off, but it just seems off because I know who he is in his personal life. Like, everyone knows his kind of, like, real-life persona, and also all the roles he's played before kind of roll into his persona as well. And so seeing him in this role just feels weird at first, but he does an excellent job. He makes it work. He, he fits in there. Uh, I'd say the only, and this isn't going to be a super long review, I won't have any of these be really long, but... Uh, the only real big problem for me with this film was the volume levels. Uh, it fluctuated a lot between being super soft and being really loud because there were times where characters were kind of almost whispering. They weren't quite whispering, but it's just like very, very soft talking. And it was really hard to hear where I had my volume set, but I couldn't move my volume up too much because once the crazier parts hit where people are like yelling and like there's crazy stuff going on. Um, it's, it gets so friggin' loud. So like the range of volume was actually problematic with watching this film. Uh, that is a relatively minor thing. I guess maybe move closer to the screen for, for the, 
for the quieter parts and further away for the louder parts. I don't know. Maybe that's something. Or just have your remote in hand so you can keep moving it up and down. But actually, <laughs> while I was watching this film, um, I realized that the batteries in my remote were dead. So I could not control the volume, actually. <laughs> so I had to leave it where it was. So that's why it was such a big problem for me. Otherwise, I could have sat there and, like, you know, moved it up and down. But, you know, won't be a problem for most other people, I'm assuming. But uh, I did want to say before I kind of give like a rating on this, that uh, Jeremy Saulnier, I watched this film not knowing who, who wrote it and directed it, and then I looked it up after the fact. I was like, I really like that film. That was really good. What other stuff has this guy done? So I looked it up, and Jeremy Saulnier did a film I've already seen before. It was his first, I think, actually, yeah, his first like feature film was called Murder Party, and it is on Netflix right now, and I actually think it's on Shudder, the Shutter streaming service as well uh, at the moment. So if you have either of those or both of those, you can watch Murder Party. It's a really low budget film, but I remember seeing it many, many years ago when it first came out on DVD and I actually own it. It's in my stack. God, it's hard to point at these. It's in my stack somewhere over in this area or something. No, further over, but it's in my DVDs at slash Blu-rays. But uh, Murder Party, it's, it's a really low budget film, but it's pulled off extremely well and the writing is really good. I highly recommend that one. I like it quite a bit. So when I found that out, I was like, oh, well, then obviously I already like this writer director. And then now this is the second film I'm seeing, and it's also really good. So then I was looking, what else does he have? He has one called Blue Ruin, which I was like, I better add that to my Netflix DVD queue. I went and looked, and it's already in my queue. I was like, oh, I guess I've heard about this some other time and put it in there. Most likely from Rue Morgue Magazine, because I read that awesome horror magazine Rue Morgue and they I get a lot of recommendations for horror films out of that so if people are interested check out Rue Morgue uh the other one is Hold the Dark and I saw that when I saw this film and that one's from 2018 Blue Ruins from 2013 Murder Parties from 2007 Green Rooms 2015 then Hold the Dark is 2018 just last year and I saw that it's a Netflix uh film so I was like oh well it's got to be on Netflix and it is so I plan to watch that film relatively soon. I did watch the trailer for it right after watching Green Room, and I was like, this looks very good. It looks like it's really good. So it's in the same vein as, like, Green Room. It's like a thriller, uh, maybe horror-adjacent type flick. So I think you're going to get more of the same. If you liked Green Room, I think it's going to be more of the same. But I will check that movie out, and maybe I'll actually do... I'll probably do a review for that, too. So, yeah. And then... Um, True Detective, he's going to be doing two episodes of True Detective. I think he's directing two. Let me see, is he writing? No, he, he's not doing any writing on True Detective. He is directing two episodes of season three of True Detective, which I don't believe has come out yet, but it's this year on HBO. So I only saw the first season of True Detective. I thought it was outstanding. Uh, I have not seen the second season. I probably will see it. I've heard it's not so great, especially in comparison to the first season, but, you know. But it's cool to see that Jeremy Saulnier is getting more work. Uh, maybe True Detective will be a really big stepping off point for him to get bigger budget stuff. But then again, is that really what I want for this individual? Because I feel like as you start getting more bigger budget, unless you become super famous, you start being more stifled with your creativity and what you are allowed to do film-wise. So... I don't know. It's this kind of thing. But anyway, um, yeah, so in summation, I do my star ratings out of five stars. Half stars are included. I'd give this four out of five stars. This is a very solidly good film, and I would definitely recommend it to anyone who has interest in this type of film. There is some gruesome stuff in it, so you have to be able to really handle that, but anyone checking this um, review out probably is already fine with that, is my guess. But anyway, thank you everyone for checking this out. Let's uh, have some comments down there. Have you seen Green Room? Do you want to tell me what you think of Green Room? Because I'd love to hear it. Uh, hit that subscribe button for me. literally takes you a second, and it means a lot to me. I'm trying to grow this channel so that I can do more. And one of the other things is, if you like unboxings, I do some on this channel. And I will increase, potentially, some unboxings if I can monetize the channel. I need 4,000 subscribers, so I'm very far away from that right now. So... But if you can help me out, word of mouth, hitting that subscribe, hitting the notification bell, always checking out the videos, you know, whatever. But thank you for everything. 
all the videos you have watched. And this is, if this is your first time watching a video, welcome. And hopefully you check out more. But until next time, keep it brutal.